Mm -hmm. Is that close enough? Yeah. I think we have, we have a quorum. It's here. It is the 31st of January. It's a meeting of the Tuffin Borough Budget Committee. I'm going to call the meeting in order. We have a quorum, so we'll start with the budget. The budget allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you have any public input? Okay, okay none forthcoming. We're going to uh, work a little bit out of order here as far as the uh, adoption of the January 17th minutes. Those <coughs> you might not be aware, but the meeting was inadvertently not posted correctly for the 17th, and because it was not posted correctly, it is not a legal meeting. So, all the discussion, everything, the votes do not count. Gary and I talked about this, and we thought that you know we could do we could do it in a couple of different ways. One of which was just to take the minutes and approve the minutes, but I don't think those would be legal votes. So what I would like to do is I would like to go back through the minutes uh, or the uh, votes on the 17th and have them re-voted on. That way they'll be official. All right. And looking at the notes from the minutes, the first one we have is what is the new Article 9. And that is going to be to see the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $125,000 to replace and equip the fire department's 2010 car one. And we have a motion. Do those minutes get sent out? I beg your pardon? Do they get sent out? The minutes? Yeah, I didn't get them. I just checked my email right now. Uh, she, she did send, I got a copy. Is there a package in there for me? Well, I have extras here. Can I get set? Thanks. All these are just reaffirmations of what was voted on at the last yeah. meeting. At the last meeting, the vote was 6 0. We have a motion on this. So moved. Is that a second? Second discussion. Was in favor aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The next is Article 11. To see the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to establish an Engine 4 Capital Reserve Fund for the purpose of purchasing and equipping a new fire truck as suggested by the Capital Improvement Committee. We have a motion on this one. Jeff, you did it last time. I'll make a motion. Motion to be made. Is there a second? I'll second. Dave's not here. For the discussion. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 12. The C of the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $36,000. $36,130 to purchase and equip a compactor to replace compactor 2 at the transfer station. I'll make a motion. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Article 13. The seat of the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to establish a capital reserve fund for the purpose of purchasing and equipping a new wheeled loader for the transfer station. So moved. It's moved. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on this? Do you want, Chris wasn't here the last time. Do you want Chris to explain his thinking on this? Would that be helpful? Be great. Sure. Um, my argument was for the four miles, but that was I want me to go. Yeah. Why do you okay. want a loader? Why? Okay. Well, my reason was not. Apparently, 
tell you there was some misconception that the reason that I wanted a wonder was just to move containers, and that was part of the reasoning behind it. But the bigger reason was for snow removal. Uh, <coughs> the machine that we have out there is not quite big enough for the pusher that we have up there. For a very light storm, we can use the pusher that we have. It's a 14 foot pusher. Uh, so if we have a small storm, we can use it. But if we have anything big enough, which is, it's not efficient. So the loader is a snow removal piece of equipment. Um, right now, we rely on the town to come up there and do snow removal. Well, that's good, but the town doesn't really have equipment capable of coming in there and cleaning up our place either. Um, they can make a pass when they leave. It's a town who tend to commit themselves to cleaning up our place. It's going to be a couple hours of the truck committed to cleaning up the place. And then we still have to clean up around with tomatoes and everything else. So, my argument for that uh, piece of equipment was if I mapped out the storms that we had in 2021, we had 28 probable storms in 2021, which accumulated to be 112 man hours of problem time. Well, if you take that man who drives the town plow truck and put him back on the town roads, he can plow the whole town three times. If we have a loader up at the, up at the transfer location, we can do the transfer location ourselves. Just seems to make sense. And I printed off the avoided costs in the, the budget. <coughs> it's my quick job for the budget and the Bush here too. What we did this year in income and um, the actual income that we made in fees and the avoided costs for the transfer station and the savings just this year for the town was 160660 77, which was almost the cost of the wheel order. If we don't say that like that. Okay, we're going to do income <coughs> at some point. I, I think all of you guys got the income. Yeah, we got that. We'll do that a year. Yeah. So I just think it's, um, it's, it's a piece of equipment that the town will own. We'll have it for 20 years at least. I offered it to M, the fire chief, also for the critical incidents. But we had it already two weeks ago when the saw road was closed for almost 24 hours because the uh, snow was on and the trees were down. Um, I offered it to him for uh, you know, uh, emergency management. Or, you know, uh, if the town needs it, we'll give him an operator. They can go out with a loader and move trees, whatever he needs. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a valuable piece of equipment for the town. We move to the second. Is there any further discussion on this one? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, let's see. And Article 14. To see that the town will vote to uh, raise and appropriate the sum of $52,000. I think this one was tabled. So we don't have to vote. With the fire department suppression? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, We've got a vote here. Uh, I thought it was zero. Yeah, I thought we had voted for it. Yeah. yeah. We never voted on it. Yeah. Wow, really? Wow, I'm sorry. I'm oh. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we did. Oh, wait a minute. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm confusing this with the solar panels. Yeah. Okay. Right. The solar panels. Yeah. Solar panels. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay, so as we say, 52,000 to purchase and install fire suppression system in town office files. Uh, do we have a motion on this one? So moved. So moved. Second. And seconded. So any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. <laughs> Article 15, of course, is uh, the, the overall budget, but we will not be voting that until after we have our public hearing next week. And then, uh, according to the minutes, Article 16 and Article 17 were discussed. I don't think 16 was. I think this is a new one. That's new? Yeah. That's See, uh, the I beg your pardon. There are M's and O's and P's in our minutes, yeah. so we're yeah. looking at different it's, things. Yeah. 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 17, we decide to hold that on. Oh, okay. 16 is no. 16 and 17, no. 16 is, but they're not dollar They're not dollar They're not dollar And we know we've got 16. Hey, Gordon, can I get a copy of the extra package now? Oh. Do I do an extra back there? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the same one I have two, Gordon. It's all things all set. Are you all good? Set. Yeah. Everything you need? Okay, well, that takes care of last week's business. Right. Which leaves us this evening with Article 3, 4, and 10. To deal with. And I'd like to, can we just take another look at two? Because I added language to two. And I don't know whether you want to revote it or not, but I eliminated one non um, monetary article, which would have been 16, and added the language, third line down after the comma and to have the town continue to hold the union work and boat launch in perpetuity for the benefit of the general public both residents and non-residents. This is to satisfy um, yes for whatever, we've always held it in public trust, but they wanted that language. And it also enables us to apply for a $100,000 grant can I ask a question on this? There, there sure. were certain, there are certain things that there are certain limitations on this that you guys have the purview of, right? right? Yeah. The selectmen have the purview of. What are those limitations? Uh, hours of docking, parking. Um, there's no commercial activity there, and I guess we never voted on that airplane landing. I'm not sure that would have passed or failed, but if we were to allow commercial activity there, other than barges, then we'd have to put that out on the street for a, a proposal. And then, I'm not sure if this board would do it, but a future board could allow kind of uh, boat tours, I guess, something like that. You could allow, yeah. yeah. Tiki huts. Well, so I, don't know about, <laughs> well, I don't know if we could have bars out there, but maybe. I, yeah, you know, just, so but like, basically, yeah, it's yeah. it's the hours that you can tie off, the um, hours you can park. There's areas that we don't allow anybody to tie up, which is for the fire boat and the fishing game. So who sets that? We do. The Board of Selectmen sets but, that. But who gives you the right? So what under this gives you the right to set that? Nothing in this gives us the right. It's just, it's statutory that we manage the assets of the town. So, for instance, um, Central Park, somebody wants to have a, or no, here's a better example, 19 Mile Beach. There's a lady, Mrs. Beveridge or Ms. Beveridge, that wants to do a beer fest out on the ice. Well, they need access to the lake, so they have to come to us. So we set the conditions for that, you know, insurance, police, all of that. Yeah. And then they provide assurances of that and guarantees of that, and then we allow them to have the event. But that's all 
within that statute, which gives the selectman the duty to, you know, manage the asset, to so sell assets. I'm going to ask this one other way then. Does the hundred thousand dollar grant mm -hmm. give the selectman the right to still set those with this language in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it doesn't change anything. The only thing that language does is it takes away the selectman's ability to put the pier on the market as as government pro as public property. So if, if we take something for taxes, for instance, we can put it back on the ma market for a tax sale. We can hold on to it. We can so do. I think an interest of full disclosure yeah. to the community on this, I think it's really important to say because right now it says. It's open. It's free for everybody to use however you want. The way it's written right now, I think we should still have a thing that says comma, subject to the, I'm not a lawyer, but subject to the selectman statutory right to limit its uses. Right. To limit uses. I think that protects you too. You know, I, I think it, we might want to get that reviewed because I don't think we have the right to do that. Well, you may have anything, to anything over the water is. Is state owned? No, but this no, is no, 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 no. I mean the access, not the not the physical entity of the, of the pier, but the, any access over the water. The minute they touch the dock, yeah, it, we don't have any any control over them driving by or idling right. off the dock. But the minute they touch the dock, they're touching town property. So, even though the boat's floating, yeah, it's now a part okay. of our purview. Well, and that and that is correct. That is so. Uh, it is on the water. It's the state. Yeah. Although most of these water, trust me, I'm, yeah. Most of these wa most of this wa water, it's most of the New Hampshire state laws are still subject to local ordinances. But on the land specifically, they can they control it. Yeah. And they should. It's part of what they should do. And that's why I don't think this is complete disclosure. It's like the barge traffic. We eliminated barge traffic at Herbert Lane. And that's a public launch yeah. at the end of uh, Tuftaburg Mac. And we've limited the barge traffic to just 19 miles here mm -hmm. for a union war. So I think the only the, the language to be added here would be the subject to the selectman statutory right to limit uses. But once again, this is a non-monetary item. I don't know if it's necessarily our job mm -hmm. as a right. budget committee to determine the, the wording or the interpretation of this. It's your job, and your job is solve the town meeting. I think it's, to your point, I think we need to run that particular language by the grant authority down in Concord. Yeah. And see if that squirrels that, or yeah. if it's okay. Because part of what they're trying to drive is <coughs> perpetual public access to the Great Ponds. And that's, you know, so they gave us this language to put in there. Um, I'm sure that they, well, I'm not sure. I would hope that they would have thought that, of course, you're going to have some public, you know, some statutory or not statutory, but local ordinances that yeah. are going to control this, that, and the other thing. Otherwise, people could just go park their car, they could flop a whole pier with their cars. They do. And you could do nothing yeah. about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we, we have parking ordinances. So that's a parking ordinance <coughs> are easier to. Maintain because those end at the water's edge. Basically, you can't drive out on the pier and park your car. So we can't. We have signage for how long you can park to the right of the entrance to the pier. I, I, and we need to maintain access for the fire and rescue. I also think that you you you, you also you also I think with the face. Um, I think you also face, you know, there's obviously been stuff going on in that area. So the more clear you can be, the yeah. better it is that you still control what people do in that area. And I think it is the money you put because they ask for money to do it. And they want to put a limitation on it, so. Well, I'm just saying it's that. Yeah, it's a yeah, mining okay. yeah. article. I don't mind putting the language before okay. um, the grant writers or the grant house writers. But our approval or disapproval, the Warren article is pretty much moot because it doesn't, it, it's not, a, it is a non monetary. Well, no, it no, isn't. No, no, it's monetary. It's in the monetary yeah. one. He combined it 
last week he had a separate it was a separate mm -hmm. one. Right. It's now tied to a money article. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I missed that one, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So it's now it's now tied and I understand Rob's point. The voters, if they were thinking about it, they could say, Oh, well, we'll approve the two hundred and eighty seven five, but no, I don't want to have that verbiage in there and then that would shoot out your ability to go and try and get that hundred thousand dollar grant. You, you, so I, I can see where the balance should be, and I don't know if it would be, to your point, if well, if they start. said if they said no to the language, it would be up to you to stand it. to stand up before this is voted on by the voters and say this is subject to <coughs> this is what we're going to do. So I don't know if that cares a problem. I'm going to make a motion that we eliminate the language after and. And I'll, I'll put it back in a separate one article. So the language and to have the town continue to hold a union work and boat launch in perpetuity for the benefit of the general public. That's excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Put that in a separate one. Yeah. Right. There you go. So we'll keep all this the originally. To, all the way to non residents So now we're just you're, you're you're circling saying, on an appropriate. That way you're able to protect the hundred thousand you're going for, right? I got to no. do something do or not go for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's I, the alternative. Right. It's, it's a guy who asked for the job. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. But if they, so would you guys be comfortable if they took away your right to to be, whatever, well, use the right word, I think is the right word. Okay. To, 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 to you know, have it under the town ordinance and town rules. Right. 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 I mean, so if they so actually really said that, that no, you yes. lost that right. Yeah, no, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, right? right? Yeah, so they should allow so you to the language that says. Very, very right. So all the Warren article does is empowers yeah. us to apply for the grant. If the grant's conditions are too onerous, then obviously we won't do it. It's not. The language of the Warren article doesn't obligate us to accept the grant. Yeah. No, no, but I'm just saying, when you put this language in with the openness in it, mm -hmm. They should allow you to also tack on that you can still make sure it complies with town ordinances and rules and you know, set certain. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's part of accepting the grant. You have to work yeah. that out. Well, I think what Rob's saying is that we'll put the condition out there in front. Yeah. And then if they don't like that condition, then. Exactly. All bets are off. Exactly. Yeah, right. Just what we're going to do. But the way you're doing this by splitting it apart, you know, this yeah, is good. good. So we're just going to go back to the original Warren article mm -hmm. that we already approved last week. Perfect. That's so done. So we, so you don't need to re vote on it because he's going to take it out and leave it the way it was. But well, we still have to vote. Right. We still have to re vote it. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. So I don't even know what happened with the way it was. I got it. Okay, let's read what I read like that and then. Okay, so. Thank you. Article 2. The C of the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of 200. $87,500 for repairs and upgrades of Union Wharf and the boat launch. The special warrant article will be non lapsing appropriation raised from the undesignated fund balance. No additional money is to be raised from new taxes. This article will not lapse until upgrades and repairs to the wharf and boat launch are completed or by March 2028, whichever is sooner. I make a motion. Second. Motion has been made and second. Any further discussion on Article 2? Okay. Those in favor, aye. 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 Good. Thank you. Okay. So you're going to, that means that you will have a second, a second warrant article for this this year? No, the other one is not, not us. It's not financial. Yeah, there's no, I, okay. I, I right. I'll bring it to the meeting, but it, it's okay. Like, all right. So the, the, there's nothing else to entertain you. Right. Okay, fine. It's yeah. like the last two on this. Okay. Right. Right. Quick, quick question before we get to the newer article: Do we have to vote to accept the other minutes that are part of this meeting to incorporate them into the? In, mm -hmm. So, yeah. You go. Know yes, we have to do that too. Okay. Yeah. One more time. We we haven't accepted the minutes. For the last meeting, yeah. because it wasn't because it, it wasn't really it wasn't noticed. Then we have to vote on all the other stuff that we voted on in those minutes. We approved minutes, so right. and that's what that's what we're doing right now. Doing. That's right. Well, oh, I, I thought we could just after the one article, I thought we could just adopt to bring those. No, because they're unofficial. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. So what we have to do is we have to continue the NAMA meeting. Yes. We have to review and approve the minutes of January 3rd. Yep. Right. That's, that's and right. Rob had made a... Rob, can you... One is the word verbiage change in one spot. Four. Sorry. It's okay. This was on the third. Or the well, I, I got the minutes for January third, so I can I can tell you exactly what we we approved. Um, he, actually, there he was wanted clarification under budget revisits forty two twenty. You requested that we add the words and that the selectmen's adjustment for budgeted <coughs> costs reflected in the difference in costs from January one twenty twenty three through May one twenty twenty three directly at the end of the third sentence. Right. That was the difference that you recommended in the draft on the third. Yes. So I have all the agendas with me in my pot. Your agendas? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to And other than that, I think, Gary, you didn't see anything else, did you? Okay, so do we have a motion to accept the third, the third's minutes? As, As amended. amended. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, that all being said, I think we cleared up our uh, housekeeping. We can move on to our last three warrant articles that have, that have been tabled previously. The first of which is the old Article B, the new Article 3. Mm -hmm. okay. And that is to see the town will vote to uh, vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $450,000 for the preparation and paving of major town roads. So first of all, I want to thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Really, really helpful. Thank you. So I know this, we have had to do this. There's not a great job for some time to copy. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Do, I do the copy. Well, do we have a motion on this one? Yeah, I, I have a couple of questions on it. Well, in order to discuss, we need a motion. We have a motion. Okay. I make a motion. Move is there a second? Second. Second. Now we have discussion. Thank you. Go ahead, Rob. So I um, the uh, this this sheet that came in here, which I guess is what the four fifty budget is based on, which is all states constructioning. Yeah. Proposal contract. It's not, okay, let me just clear okay. uh, where that comes from. Yeah. So that's what we were paving last year. So we have a relationship to the extent of what is the cost going forward for certain roads. This isn't a contract to give that person the job. This is, we need to get a cost figure together so we can get more article put together. So it is an estimate of cost for doing particular roads. Okay. Budget estimate. Right. It will go out on the street for for bid. For bid. Right. At, at, in what? I'm just wondering what time. Because I'm trying to figure out just to. Generally, they go out in you know. May. Right. May or June. If, if if it looks as though the market is really heavy and there's going to be hard a hard time getting a paver here, they might go out earlier than that. But we haven't even gotten to the point of determining exactly which roads we're going to do. We've got a projected, you know, series of roads we're going to do, but things can change between now and the end of the town meeting. So, so if I were to summarize the process, what it is, is you've got four hundred fifty thousand dollars in the budget. Mm -hmm. You go out to bid. Right. They get free bids. Oh, sometimes we get as many as five. So for doing the work, and basically yeah. you, you you take whatever bid has the best value, mm -hmm. float, and you pipe as much water as you can for four hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's right. how it works. Yep, that's basically. 
basically how it works. <laughs> this is very good. I got to understand because we were doing. Yeah, and we do go through the process. I mean, we do a drive around or two drive arounds or three drive arounds to look at the roads that the road agents think of. They're about. all bad. And then we, we do look at the map, and all of the roads as they get paved or redone are plugged into Lakes Region Planning's <coughs> database so that we can get a new map to see where we are, you know, how are we doing as far as yellow roads and the red roads and the green roads, and hopefully more of them are green and few of them are red. I guess my only other question, I know you're going to tell me I don't have it. If I either vote yes or no, but both of you, I totally understand that. Okay. But the, what's, what's not stopping us from spending 650 on the on the main road next year? What, what, what actually sets the 450 versus getting our roads in great shape? Okay, the 450, we're doing incremental increases. And if I thought that I had included the you schedule. 10, 5, and 10% increase. That's all right. Yeah. Um, the other element that comes into play is the overall budget. So where can we be realistically with our paving and stay within some sort of um, budget that's not going to drive the taxes out of, out of sight? Or what other projects are we doing that need to get done, like Union War, for instance, or the police station, although the money's all there for the police yeah. station, yeah. that doesn't really enter into it. But from my, and I'm just speaking as one selectman, but I think the other two would agree, that we look at the total operating budget, what drivers were there, and then what's a reasonable amount of warrant articles to stay somewhere within a, you know, four or five or 10 percent tax increase. We could, I suppose, in a year when we decide we're not going to do any major capital projects, put six hundred thousand dollars in and do more roads. It's or, or else when asphalt prices are low and energy prices and oil prices are yeah. low and things like that to take advantage, which yeah. may you know. But, but we do that anyway. So if 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 there's a reduction in asphalt prices, and it hasn't happened for a few years, but it did happen, I forget whether it was eighteen or nineteen. Then we did more paving. You know, we, we did, although the reclamation is tough, so when you're doing a major road, you need to go all the way down. But if you're doing a, na a neighborhood road with a top coat, for instance, you can pick up a few things. Or um, the aprons. You know, so we've tried to, I, in the past we have done that when we've been able to buy a little more paving for the money that we've got. But for years this was running at, Three hundred thousand, I think, is or even less than that. Yeah. So we're trying to gradually increase the amount we do. Okay. Is there further discussion on Article Three? None forthcoming. Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you. Then move on now to Article Four. Which was the old still shape. This is the ten. I'm sorry. Just for explanation purposes, this is the same process that we go through. It's just a different types of roads. Is it? Yeah. And we did have a, an email from a party on Shirley Way who wanted us to spend four hundred thousand dollars on neighborhood roads and nothing on. I'm going to read the article to the record. The city of the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $150,000 for the preparation and paving of Tupton Borough neighborhood roads. Do you have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, moved and second. Now there's further discussion, I think. Are you? You're here. <coughs> you're here. Sorry, so no more questions. On this. It's like paving, just small roads. Is there any, more, any discussion then on Article 4? No forthcoming. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And unless my notes deceive me, I think we're going to move on to Article 10. And I'll read the article. To see the town will vote to raise and appropriate a sum of $300,000 for 
for the purchase of and installation of a 100,000 kilowatt solar electric generation facility. 100 kilowatts. Did I, did I say 100 kilowatts? It's 100,000. I'm sorry, 100 kilowatts. Solar electric <coughs> generation facility. $90,000 to come from a federal rebate. $210,000 is to be raised by taxes. This is a non lapsing article. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. It's a second. Now is there a discussion? So I have a bunch of questions. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Surprise. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Well, I, you can go first, Jeff. No, no. I don't need to leave this on you. So, so, um, when did, what date would this? What date would we start, and how long, and when's the implementation date on this? Well, we started the day after town meeting. If this is approved by the voters, now we have the money. Now we have to create an RFP. So, let's say that takes a couple of weeks. So now we've got the RFP. We've gotten we've gotten a couple more leads from. Uh, providers or installers. So then we put it out to the public and we also put it out to the people who have already given us numbers, you know, projected numbers. And at that point in time, we look at what their proposal is in relationship to our RFP. Hopefully our RFP is detailed enough to get us what we're looking for. And we decide which one of those, or more than one, we can bring more than one in, interview, talk about the products that they're giving, talk about the warranties, talk about the service, and all the rest of it. And then we have a permitting process we have to go through if we're going to do it at the transfer station. That shouldn't take too long, but who knows with DES. And once we're satisfied that the installer that we're that will do the best job for us can get it done, we should have a time frame of when they can do it, and then we award that the contract at that point in time. So it may take the better part of the year actually to get the package together. I can't say with any certainty when that thing would get turned on sitting here tonight because I don't know how busy people are. Or you know, when their production comes towards us. So when, when have the regulations been written yet? Have the feds written the regulations as to how you get your tax credit? Yeah, it's not a tax credit. No, no, I know, it's a, it's it's a, a payment. Re, it's a payment, and it has been written, yeah. Those, no, I know the, the, the act's been passed, but have the actual minions in the, in the, from what I've heard, yeah. have written the actual code. I've read the code that's, I thought was passed, or I think is yeah. passed. So, and and the uh, it's part of the infrastructure bill, so it's funded to a certain degree, or probably 100 percent. But it's all all oh, the money's there for sure. Yeah. No, no, there's no, no. Yeah. The and one of the requirements, and we talked to our provider at New Hampshire Electric Co-op, is the company needs to do the granting. You know, they need to drive that bus. We, we don't have the skill to fill out the particulars of the installation we're getting. So, I mean, part of the RFP, I'm, I'm hoping, and I'm pretty certain, will be that they will provide all the information that the federal government needs to get us the 30,000, or whatever it is, 30%. So what, how, it's, how, it's, how I've read it to be, and so I was just worried about where the article is written, mm -hmm. is that you're going to end up funding whatever this example is, 310 or 330,000 or whatever it was for right. the upfront cost for it. Then once it gets placed in, the year it gets placed in service, you actually file a tax return. Mm -hmm. That goes to the IRS. Yeah. So you can, you can read this. Uh, it goes to the IRS. That tax return then gets processed like everybody else's tax return, and then you get a refund. And so what I'm a little worried about is that if you build it in 2022 into 2023, you put it in service in 2023, 
you file your return at the end of 2023, mm -hmm. you're going to get your refund because the reforms won't even be out to file the return. But it's, not, it's not a refund. Yeah, it is it's a not. It's not a tax. It's not a tax credit. Yeah, I th it I, is a tax. It is. That's how. It is a refund. For the regs. For municipalities, I think it's different. But I'll, we'll certainly find out before we cut a check. So that's that is a I think right up on it. Just to take a look because I was, I was curious, curious as to how the whole tax credit thing was going to work. Mm. So it is yeah. a refund, but you have to file a return to get it. Oh, just okay. like a regular person has to file a return to get it. That's what, but I don't, this is before the regs were written, so the regs yeah. may have changed. I don't know. But I just want to make sure that the way we write an article that we're... Okay, just so you're clear on how this is going to go yeah. down. We can't spend dollar one until all the dollars are, are accounted for. So if the system costs, let's say, $300,000, and they're willing to build it for $300,000, we need to provide $300,000. And the way the Warren article is written, we're only getting 210,000 from the voters. We're gonna get the other money from the federal government. So if that, for some reason, is gonna take more than a year to happen, then we need to sit down and talk about how we're gonna accomplish that. I think that's why, that's why I brought this up. Right. I think the, the article doesn't actually, the one article, if you do lapse over into different years, mm -hmm. you may have a two year gap between having to fund the actual cost for the mm -hmm. system and getting your 90,000 back from the federal government. Well, we can't, we can't cut a check for that 90 grand. Right, but unless you change the Warren article. Right? So. Right, you may have to make the Warren article 300,000. And the way it's working right now, just based on how the math works yeah. and how the cash flows, I don't think you're gonna be in the same year. So I think that's just, Something you want to take a look at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So get off. But it's also good as a non-absent article. Right. So it can go into the following year. Okay. Everything does not have to be done with this article in 2023. Right. It can and roll it over to 2024. It can, it can roll over, you know. But you can't but pretty close to it. Right. So I don't know how this all works going on. I'm just saying that if it ends up, if you have enough to fund the 300,000 front, maybe once you want to negotiate with the with right. the provider is that you're going to pay them two hundred and ten thousand, right? And then they got to wait until you get the tax credit back, right? To pay the, the last piece, something along those lines may work. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. So that was the one. Just that, and that's more of just a straight. In my book, it's a straight logistical. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a cash flow. Make sure the article works properly. Um, and then I went through the detailed math mm -hmm. on this, and I just have a couple of questions. So they, they say right now, your current cost, yeah. But what, is, is your current cost really 26 bucks a kilowatt hour? Just a total. 26 cents, sorry, a yeah. kilowatt hour for the town? Is that, is that what the cost is right now? Yeah, I mean, I think it was up, but it works out to $32,000 a year, so. It's probably 26 cents, including everything. Okay. I mean, so just so you know that right now, for instance, at Pack Solutions, which is my point of which I called, <coughs> we're paying 16 cents in a, a kilowatt hour. Right. So, they, and there's a whole program going on in, in the government to, to base, with, with New Hampshire right now, to reduce electricity rates for businesses and municipalities and towns. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so right now, they're telling us we can actually get down to 14 cents a kilowatt hour. So if you were to do that, and you ran these economics, you yeah. don't save any money at all. So it's, it's the, uh, it's the, you know, so I think one thing maybe is to look at really trying to tighten up the kilowatt hour rate you're paying mm -hmm. and negotiate the hell out of that. And you may have to lock it in for two or three years, which is more work is in that kind of thing. Oh, you are? Yeah. So, so that, 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 these economics are really driven mm -hmm. by two things. One is the rate you're paying today and the rate you can sell it back for. <coughs> and there's no lock in. And what, what really worries me about this is the economics are so skinny on it that you're, you know, you can change those by a few cents. 
and you know, they lose money. And these guys are so adept at running these numbers, you know, beyond the Which is why we have to be conservative making our own presentation. Right, but this, <coughs> so, but this would make sure that we're, our asses is covered. Yeah, and I'm not sure that you're gonna, if you were, this is not, this is aggressive. This presentation here, which gets you to the 7% return, to me is really aggressive on the, uh, you know, they're not guaranteeing, they're not gonna guarantee you production on those things. They're not guaranteeing you that. They're not guaranteeing you the rate you're gonna get paid. And any of that stuff. So no, you have to make certain assumptions. Well, as far as the rate, the rate you get paid, projections. you negotiate that before you break ground. I mean, we need to get a, a deal to put together with New Hampshire Electric Co-op. But if if let's say Bob Murray figures out a way for us to get our power for fifteen cents a kilowatt hour, yeah, and the numbers don't work. No harm, no foul. I mean, we haven't spent any money. So our job going forward after the more articles passed is to say, can you build it for the cost that we need to do it? Can we get the right return on the electricity from the New Hampshire Electric Co-op? So we need to negotiate with them. And then is there a, a less expensive alternative, i.e. buying electricity for 14 cents a kilowatt hour? I mean, all of these questions need to be answered prior to us breaking ground and cutting checks. But after we've been given the approval to do the project. Right, yeah, we can't, I mean, we can't get anywhere until we've got the money to do it. But then the money, if you choose not to do it, goes back into the undesignated fund balance. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, we don't get to spend it right. willy nilly. And is there a reason why it's being presented this year versus? next year when things might be different. It can be, it can be presented again if, if the voters don't choose to do it. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, go ahead, Bob. I mean, because I think the 30% tax uh, credit just came out and I think we'd be foolish not to jump on it. If you, mm -hmm. can, if you can get it done and they don't change the regs. Right, that's why I think it's important to jump on it now before they change the regs. Before well, I don't know. think they're gonna change the regs so it's much. It's a 10-year credit. So you got 10 years to get it done. Yeah. It's not just one year. And I don't think these regs have already come out yet. I don't know. I think they've, they don't think they've been, normally, let me tell you why I don't think they've come out yet. It's because the IRS is so painful on these things that they will, they, this was only going to affect people's 2023 returns because it can't have happened before December 31st, 2022. So they still haven't written the regs for 2022 yet. So, so they're going to write these regs in the fourth quarter. So we're not going to actually really know, I don't think. A 2023 thing can't even be done until 2024. Correct. Correct. And we're not jumping into this willy-nilly. I mean, we, no, had to, I we, we had to get a budget estimate in order to, uh, to get the funds to do it. And of course they're going to they're gonna give us a projection that's as rosy as they can give us. Yeah. You know, um, the, the rubber hasn't hit the road until we do an RFP, tell them exactly what we're looking for, and then get back from them whatever their proposal is. I, I'm wondering on the, and Bob, I don't think you guys, you guys don't do anything. Well, you know, I've learned that in the last two months, month of work. You guys <laughs> don't do stuff. And she's just, I, that's did, not, not what I'm saying. Did, but I, I personally fight two things on this. One is, I, I'm all good with clean energy. I think it's, I think it's the right way to go. So I fundamentally agree with it. I don't trust any of these guys. They, they, they basically just rip your face off and rip your Well, that's, that's, that's up to us to figure out once we get into, once we get the authority to move forward with the project. And that's yeah. the other reason we've got a, we started building a relationship with New Hampshire Electric Co-op. It was going to buy the power. They've dealt with all of these players. You know, they know the charlatans and the less charlatans and maybe the honest brokers. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking for a little guidance out of them as well for projects that they've seen put in generally for business. I think we're the only municipal project that they've looked at. So, I mean, we're not going to just make our minds up based on a right. short skirt have, uh, with a big smile. Well, they have looked at the... Uh, the 
soil field up in lakes. Is that there in the co-op or is that ever sort of? I don't know. I know be one, interesting. That'd be an interesting one to Glenn Moulton um, which is privately owned, they're involved in that or were involved in that or not. Yeah. Plus in the design, they, re they are intimately involved. Revision did the one at Vinton Lakes. And that's the company, the first company that we talked to, the girl that was in here talking to us. Okay. It's a vision. They're, they're like and the that, biggest player in New Hampshire. That may be who you are looking at there. Oh, that's right. Right. These are I mean, Bob, do you know who owns that big one in Pittsfield? No. I made photocopies of no. most of the no. stuff we've done. Yeah, this is, this is very, very helpful. So based on these on, on these numbers here, and this is, I think, where, where it's going to be a difficult it's a difficult thing to as to what you do to vote on there, um, and I understand what you guys are saying about. I'm trying. I, I don't, maybe I don't understand enough about how you get the authority to have the money. Yet, so sort of the project has to make sense. Based on these numbers here, I'm not sure that that I'd want to spend three hundred thousand of the town's money to earn, or even two hundred. This has got three hundred fifty thousand contingency less the. Things, probably 90,000, so 250,000 of the town's money. I think I have a hard time to earn a 7% return based on the set of projections here. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, especially with the electric costs where they're, where they're uh, placing them right now. Um, I don't envision a big drop in electricity oh, for I don't, long term. I, well, I, Do you? I, well, I think so, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a drop in electricity. I just don't think they're paying twenty-four cents. That's that's not that's that's like a, a retail rate to the guy who's living in a house. Yeah. You know, or not not spending thirty-five thousand a year. I think but, there's there's probably and I know. And these were what these projections were based off of, and then the sale rate. Mm -hmm. I just think it's such a skinny margin on this. It takes you thirteen years to get your money back. That's a long point of time to have a three hundred thousand dollar investment. In something that's very much driven by technology, and the degradation of the panels after that point too. But <laughs> I mean, if if you think that these numbers are too rich, we're not in the business of selling or buying electricity currently. So obviously, when we get a projection like that, after we have the money to buy the system that we want to buy. We can take a projection to New Hampshire Electric Co-op, and they'll tell us whether or not that 26 cents is a good number or a bad number, whether they think that the retail rate for the municipality is going to go up or down over the next 10 years. I mean, so we could, I'm sure, plug in the right numbers and come up with, you know, so if it's a 10-year or 15-year payback, then we got to another decision to make. Yeah, it's a 13 year period. Or, or 13 year. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just having a hard time going into something where you're asking the taxpayers to fund that I'm struggling with economically. That, whether, it's an, whether it's an investment I would make myself. Okay. I may make it for reasons other than economic. I may make it because really it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have that decision, but I don't know whether it's necessarily the right decision I would make. Well, what we're really talking about is whether we're going to put $300,000 of tax load on the taxpayers this year and then hope that we get a, a reasonably good package to spend that money on in a later year. Personally, right now, I feel we're, I think we can get more information without necessarily raising $300,000 through taxes this year. What's the point? Hmm? What's the point? The point is defer it. And get some more information. I, can't we talk? Can't we have more conversation? But to to Rob's point, I yeah. mean, if 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 the if the industry is rife with charlatans, what kind of information are you going to get? You're going to get good information if you've got an RFP, because now they're going to be obligated to meet those requirements that you set in that RFP. If we've asked for you know estimates, and that's all you can do when you don't have the money to buy anything. Kicking tires. Well, yeah, you but can you, could, you, could you do it this way? I'm just putting this out there. Could you say, we want to get, so we don't, we don't we have to have this thing finalized by? We want, to, we want to get three RFPs of, so we have actual numbers that we're going to vet. Mm -hmm. 
and we want to have them by we want them by February fifth. Oh, when do we have to print these things? I don't know what. Two weeks before we have to print these things. No. Do, let me because they don't do that. No, having that's been kicking, in this, that's kicking tires. Uh, having been, in, it's sort of like buying a dump truck. And you just say something to the town vote. You're right. You just send it to the town vote. And we think the town's going to approve it. And we they don't, they don't. These guys give out RFPs every day. So you, know, and you can imagine mm -hmm. eight guys bidding on every single town project with an RFP. Mm -hmm. Not even one guy wins. Yeah, we're so really all losing every time. I but think that we just need to, at this point, just whether or not we agree with the article that's being presented, they think it's okay to be presented to the voters. We just need to decide whether we think it's okay to present to the voters. I mean, that's going to be all we can do tonight. Just revisiting the police station for a second. We tried to get firm numbers from anybody. You know, concrete, electric, framing, roofing, heating. You try to get firm numbers before you go to town meeting and nobody would give them to us. Because you don't have the money, we, you know, we'll give you a number that's kind of what you, around what you're thinking. But they're not going to obligate themselves until... They know you're serious. Yeah. I mean, that's historically what we've run into. I've been playing this game with bidding for 12 years. With who, sorry? Bidding. Oh, yeah, this, bidding. this bidding process. I've yeah, been playing this yeah. game for 12 years. And uh, you come up with a budget estimate, the best you can, present it for approval. You get the approval, you get the funding, and then you send out the RFP and tighten up the project. And, and your intent is to get it done for that money or less. Yeah. And, and if you or can, not do it if... if or math, not do it at all if, if the if, math doesn't work. That's right. So, so what... That's right. So, so I guess, I guess, what math would work for you? Honestly? So, what would you look? What would you think was a reasonable rate of return to earn? What, what do you think the taxpayer should get back? What, what should be the payback period, and what should be the return? Because well, so the reason why I'm having a hard time on this, and maybe I'm just out, out to lunch on a little bit, is because I don't think that this deal would. I wouldn't if I was me personally. I wouldn't do this deal for my own personal self. I wouldn't do it. So that's kind of the stand I hold all this stuff to. And that makes it really difficult for me right now. I understand exactly what you're saying. I, just, I get it. So I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. These solar panels are guaranteed to work at 100% for 25 years. They've got an expected life expectancy of 40 years. So anything after the payback period is gravy. It's cash in the pocket. So you, gotta, you, have, you have a return of investment. You have that number of years, however that many be, uh, 6, 7, 12, 13 years. Anything after that is all money in the bank, and that's, and that's what you're getting at. But you're putting in, but you're putting in two hundred. You're putting in two hundred thousand. But you use the wrong number. You're putting in three hundred thousand today. Mm -hmm. That, given where current inflation is, is going to pretty much give you a one percent return or a two percent return over the period of time on this money. But they're also projecting out uh, electricity cost increases over the years. Yeah, it, that, but it's all part of the math. Right. But it's, really, it's increases and decreases. I don't think electricity costs are this high. But anyway, maybe I'm wrong. And if our electricity costs are less, then... Um, then this doesn't work. Well, they're not, they're not going to be less. Electric rates aren't going to go down. <laughs> it was, it went up 100%. This is premised on net metering, too. And I think part of Rob's, and I'm, I'm just guessing, Rob, yeah. is you got to... When you get into the municipal business, you've got to take your commercial hat off. I know if I come to your door and offer you a solar operation for your factory, you got money in the bank. So you can probably pay for it. And so if you make a decision to do it, you can do it. Here, we don't have any money in the bank. We have no cash. We are cash zero until the voters choose to spend money on a specific thing. So we don't have any latitude when we're talking to these guys to say, yeah, well, we're, we're fine, we got $300,000 in the bank we can pay for this tomorrow. We don't have it. Well, this is a non-lapsing article, so if we go ahead and approve this tonight, they know that. Why do they have to reach closure? They can just keep on doing anything they want. 
I think they? you need to provide incentives for that. Excuse me, who is they? Yeah, they, they, they the providers? Company, utility company. Uh, you know, you're, you're saying that we're going to present them with a picture that we're ready to buy, and so consequently they're going to get more serious on the RFP. Right. Um, well, if they answer the RFP, that's specifically what we're what we want to buy. If they can't sell it to us, then they won't answer it. Um, look, I just have a couple of, I, I read all this material that, that, that um, you, you gave us, and I, I must admit that I didn't quite understand all of it, not in the same detail that Rob has apparently got a grasp of, but um, any contract we enter with them is going to have uh, rates that we're going to pay for electricity and rates that they will give back to us for the money we put back into the grid. The price between us and New Hampshire Electric Right, right. right. Would they ever agree to just a differential rather than... I don't know, Gary. Okay. We're not in a position to build a solar plant. So, you know, we got them to come down for a one-hour meeting. We need a lot more than an hour meeting to flesh this thing out. But if the voters aren't ready to do it, we're not going to get a meeting to discuss it. What would be the point? I've got a lot better things to do. Well, I think the voters would have more incentive to approve it if they had some firm details. Um, well, then just and, go and no. I mean, at, at well, some point, we know we can build a solar system for this. We know we can build a solar system for three hundred. I'm so trying to get to a yes vote. Okay. I'm so trying to get to a yes vote. So that's not where I'm. I'm so trying to get to a yes vote. I'm, yes. Just, I'm trying to figure out a way to get to a yes vote. Right now, I can't get there. I'm being totally honest, and I think I've been tan on it. Mm -hmm. But I'm so trying to get to a yes vote. So that's not, not just vote no. I'm actually trying to get to a yes vote because I understand, I understand the dynamic that's going on. The question I have for you is when you present this to the voters, what information are you going to give them? Because they're not going to. You, you're going to Basically, what we, we, we have right in front of you. The information that we have. Right. These are the these are the three or four proposals that we have in front of us that would accomplish a hundred kilowatt installation for somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars. It's not a free lunch. You want to conserve energy, you want to be green, you want to do all the good things. It costs money. So to, for you to present this to them, right, you gotta go through and verify all these numbers. Those are projections. Yeah, yeah. but they're not, but this is not, this, this, the retail rate is not a projection. That's the actual number. If it's not right, it's not right. So I think that that's not, you know, there, there are a bunch of numbers in here that need to actually be kind of, kind of right to present. Otherwise, you're not going to get, I think you're going to run into a place where you're going to end up not meeting these economics. I think you stand a real chance not meeting these economics. If we don't, then we don't put in, we don't install the system. This minimum, so this would be your minimum economics that you would look for. Yeah, we don't. If, if, we tell you, if the numbers don't work, we don't do it. And I don't know which one you're looking at, Ralph. So I'm looking at the solar. <coughs> I'm looking at the one for this is that the for the million million dollars one for the last year. Because they didn't have two of those ones. I don't like the idea yeah, one was for yeah, a yeah, yeah, they did both. I'm looking at the one that's required. And it's no, uh, it's 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 well, they should have some incentive to try to get the money. That's how it is. Yeah, because this is a non yeah, We've raised yeah. this money. It's sitting there. They've got the town has the authority to spend it. You can stand At some point, they're going to have to spend it. Otherwise, they raise the money. It's not a good position to be in. Find me. Find me an example of that ever happening in Tuftonboro. You find me an example. I'm done with this vote of no confidence bullshit. Find me an example where the money was sitting there and the board of selectmen just spent it because they got to get rid of it. No, I'm looking at that. Never that no, I'm not happened. looking at that way, Chip. I'm looking at it in terms of the utility company not feeling that they have a deadline to meet. Also, they don't. This, they can just go on and on and on until they finally figure that the stars and the sun are lined up in their direction. It's a non-lapsing article. That money will always be there. No. It's in their benefit. It's in their benefit. 
whatever they can do it's absolutely to amazing. reduce if their this was the event that they would be given a, a, a little bit more of a carrot in, in the information that, that they're providing at present. They haven't given us any information. Exactly. Oh, yeah. this, is no. the, this is from the solar This is from the solar installer. It's nothing to do with co-op, right? The co-op got rid of their last CEO because he wasn't interested in getting into the solar business. Mm -hmm. They have a new CEO there, so they must be interested. They, they are completely involved in the major installation of Multiboro. So they're doing it. I mean, they're, they know how, what they need to do as far as getting into the solar business. So I don't think they're going to drag us out on this. But if they do, they do. I mean, I, that's up to the Board of Selectmen. I'm, I'm not saying that they're going to drag it out. What I'm saying is that they will take all the time they need to make sure that they're satisfied. I think I think they're going to run. I think I think the reality is this is this is going to be this is a very hot space right now. A lot of these kind of provisions publicly traded. I think there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's going to be they're going to get five or six bids for the cost of bringing this in, and so I think they're going to get a very competitive price at the end of the day, and it probably will be better than what this. I guess what I would get comfortable on this is if is if there was some <coughs> concept around it that this is kind of the minimum level of economics we need in order to make to do it. Right. And I don't know whether you can get to that. If this were the minimum, this was the floor, and from here it's up, and then we'll, that we were, once we've got all the numbers together, we've done our audit, we've done you know, all the due diligence you have to do, that at the end of the day, you know, we're looking at a 10-year payback. It would have to give us a 10-year payback and 8% return. What the town invests. I don't think you can put a water on the back, right? Yeah, that's it. But maybe you can, I mean, I, I, I feel comfortable if you said I, in, the, in the meeting that, that we're not going to do it unless we get these numbers. Yeah. Well, we're not going to do it if there's if there's a not a, a reasonable rate of return on it. I'm not sure what that rate, because we don't have the number from co op for what we're getting the power. What about they it? have they have two systems or two programs that they have currently for solar, and they're primarily centered around residential solar. So it's net metering, and then there's another one that's sort of like net metering, but it isn't. Yeah, I forget what the term is, but it's, yeah. it's it, it involves batteries and storage. Oh, storage, storage, storage guys. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. so what we're, what we're looking at is getting into active negotiations with them. But okay, now we're a power provider. Let's figure out what our rate of return is from you guys on the power, because net metering doesn't work if you got one central system at the transfer station. Yeah, so I, I think and I'm glad that the bearing that the battery thing, by the way, is a technology nightmare, and it's going to be outdated in no time. Yeah, we all so Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think I think the um, what, I, what I'm struggling with a little bit here. At the end of the day, this is for the town to vote. So the exactly. select, it's the select. So this we're putting it out, right? Mm -hmm. You guys are going to provide what so sort of the criteria are, and that's the and this is the cost of what it is. Right. I think we've had a very good, very extensive conversation on this one, but I would like to. Uh, I know it's where we're going to go. So we have a motion has been made and been seconded on Article Ten. Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. Aye. It's three to three, which is how we'll be here on the board. Thank you. <coughs> and I believe that concludes all of our money worn articles. Mm -hmm. Can we need to go I just add one more thing on this. Can we go, just go make sure? If the whole time is going to work before you go out into the audit, put it out to for the town because mm -hmm. you've got to bring it back, right? This got time, we got the need for bring it back. Just make sure the timing is going to work for you to get this done, okay? With the uh, and I'll cash look. out front and the payment coming in, later. right? Right, right, right. 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 Or a general meeting before the hearing.
No, we don't need to vote on that. No, there's been no money. 16, 17. No so I think we voted on all, all of our uh, money. Yeah. All our money. Right. So moving on. We don't have any correspondence in the business. Chip? So I gave you the revenues. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do that at all. What, what's DRA adjusted? What does that actually mean? Oh, is this the budget, right? No, this is the income. So yeah, it would be the revenue portion of the budget. Um, but DRA did make some adjustments. Um, to your actual? I'm sorry? To your actual? To your actual? Did no, they no. They made some adjustments to the 22, um, 2022 projection of income, and we had, uh, it had to do with um, other revenues that are coming from the state, more than anything else, um, and highway work. So our total revenue last year in 2022 was a million eight oh eight eight thirty nine. That's a million five. We're estimating for twenty three a million five fourteen. And so we'll be assuming it's hundred and ninety six it's that hundred and seventy six thousand for the property sale and the twenty thousand for the great metal park accreditation. That two hundred thousand, right? Not going to reoccur. Well, we don't. We went through and couldn't find any property that we're going to sell. We haven't taken much for taxes lately, or anything I can remember. So we can't sell the lower. Um, <laughs> and then the, if you go to the second page, it adds in the. Uh, if we were to do the solar, it would add in the solar 90,000. The USDA Police Department grant of 341 and then takes out the 287.5 that we're going to take out for the wharf and the 5,000 for contingency. So we're still pretty close to 2,387,000 to where we were before. And what do we figure? 4.25. 4.25. So if you, if you take the operating budget, which yeah. you still have to vote on, and the Warren articles, and compare them against last year's operating budget and Warren articles, the increase is 4.25%. <coughs> 4 okay, yeah. This, this 9,000 solar fed rebate is not going to come. Well, if it doesn't come in, then we're ninety thousand dollars short. But <coughs> there's hundred twenty-six thousand in local fiscal recovery fund that we're going to mess around with too. So uh, some of the money isn't on the revenue because we get it through grants. You'll be here next year, won't you? Yeah. I've got three years left. That's somebody else. How do you get excommunicated from this? Excommunicated? This gives you the opportunity. <laughs> this gives you the opportunity to say, I told you so. Right? I was going to say that. That's, it, this all this is people trying to make the right decision and the right amount. That's what we're, we're trying okay. to get the right answer. You it's still not. haven't voted on uh, Article 15. Is it a money one? It's the total operating budget of the town. Yeah, because we, can't we do don't do that until after the public okay, hearing. Okay, we're going to do it at the public hearing. That's where we, we always do it. Yep. Yeah. When is the public hearing? Next Tuesday. Tuesday. At the townhouse, 6.30. Yeah. Next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. 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 Don't town meeting. Yeah, it's a great team. Tom meeting is right in the middle of my uh, uh, my daughter's March. It's right in the middle of March. 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 Right in the middle of March.
It's right in the middle of my tax season. You can bring it. Uh, <laughs> it's right in the middle of your ski Tomorrow. vacation. No. Okay. Anything else, Jim? Um. Fifteen cents. Fifteen, fifteen seven ninety six. Okay. And I, I'm sorry I can't right. tell you exactly, but I'll make sure that you know tomorrow. Uh, the only other thing that's happening currently about Union Award is um, in the telephone chat business and email, which I don't like doing because it, you don't get to negotiate with emails. The state DES feels as though they need to be paid for the lake bed that we're buying, that we're using. <laughs> um, and so I may bring a warrant if I can figure out what they want. They won't take a dollar? I think a dollar is more than enough. Yeah. But they're still thinking. So if, if it doesn't fall within the purview of grant money that we got kicking around and it is a big number, I'll bring it forward if, if, if I have to, but I'd rather sue them. <laughs> is this new? They want to buy very new. the man under the dock yeah. that's been there since Moses. No, no, no. Dock. Now they've, they've backed off that, yeah. and now it's the 1,049 square feet, which is the area around the outside of the dock that we're going to impact. Oh, all right. Oh, jeez. I've said it. I've said it. And I, pro the problem I have with it is, you know, one of the other problems I have with it is we just got a dock permit for a guy out on Kyle Island that's putting in a crib dock, supposedly replacing a crib dock, and there's no talk about yeah. the money changing hands other than the permit. Could permit. we talk into some sort of an exchange? Do we have anything to exchange? They're short of money right now. No, 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 it's not that. They, 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 they usually let you, you know what? trade impacted land for impacted land. I'll say, you know, if it's $10,000 and it's going to cost Fish and Game 2000 or $3,000 or $5,000 a year to park their boat, you know? Yeah. yeah. But the problem that you have with negotiation is you get back to the solar. Mm -hmm. Now i got to go to the same company, DES, and ask for a permit change to put solar panels on the ground up there. So, how much do you piss them off over the, the dark? Those guys don't talk to each other, my friends, so you know. They're always different areas of MDS. Oh, they don't know each other. Okay, then. Yeah. 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 Yeah.